said one day in a little country church town. Tayo po ay mag, uh, mag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos, especially sa kaligtasan po pang mga mga kapatid and uh, very important na tanong po natin uh, ating pag-usapan. Now, bago po yan, let me give some uh, ano po mga kapatid thoughts with regards sa ating pag-aaral. So these studies natin po mga kapatid will be presented in a simple presentation of the believer's blessing in Christ. Okay? And how to uh, and how Jesus Christ had saved all of us and what the Lord Jesus Christ had done when He saved us and what He provided accompanying our salvation. So, this study is not in, is in no way, okay? This is by no means or in no way intended to be a contribution sa mga theological discussion ngayon. This is not meant para makipag-argue or to tell them what... This is just simply to present to you Okay, according to the Bible, okay, what Christ had done for us. And dapat po natin maintindihan yan mga kapatid, makuha natin na maigi, no? So hindi po ito mint na para doon. So na para para i-prove natin na tayo ay magaling, tayo no. This is simply with a heartfelt ano po mga kapatid care para sa mga tao, para sa mga kaluluwa na matanggap din natin ang na, na-enjoy din ng ng bawat ligtas. So, this is not to contribute any confusion or any form of ano po, discussion. But it is edifying in purpose para po ito, para ipatatagin ang mga saved. And this is also evangelistic in purpose para po ang hindi pa nakakilala sa Panginoon ay makilala nila at naway mananampalataya at masaved. So it is my hope po mga kapatid. Amen. And as well as that many sa lahat ng mga uh, mananampalataya po mga kapatid at sa mga hindi pa na mananampalataya could fa- would find consolation and exhortation in Christ. And through this ano po natin series po mga kapatid and simple presentation of the saving work and the grace of God. So, it is my prayer po mga kapatid that this may be use of God, okay? To the eternal glory of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And yun lang, purpose po natin po mga kapatid. And may it be po mga kapatid na yun po ang mang, mangyari po at uh, lamang sa atin, no? So, uh, I'd like you to understand, no, mga kapatid, that the greatest, okay, thing okay the the greatest thing of his power and of his might okay i'd like you to look at muna sa Ephesians chapter number 5 just want you na gusto ko lang ma-realize nyo. you know god is powerful god is the creator but you want to know the greatest thing that god has ever done i know the lord has done so many things You know what's the greatest thing that God has ever done? It's not that when He created the world, but that's a wonderful thing that He created the whole world, every creature. But there's far more grander than our creation, physical creation. Because we are created twice. Okay? I'll, I'll say that later on, mamaya, no? But let me, let's look at, tingnan po natin ang sabi ng Biblia sa Ephesians chapter number 5. Let me read uh, chapter number 1. I'm sorry, chapter number 1. Ephesians chapter number 1. Ang sabi po ng Bible po mga kapatid, um, uh, this is the prayer of the Apostle Paul at ang prayer niya that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. And pinagpipray ni Paul sa mga efficient believer na mabigyan sila ng wisdom, ng Diyos, and revelation in the knowledge of Him or in knowing God. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened naway mabuksan ang inyong mga mata ng inyong kaisipan that they may know 
what is the hope of His calling. And purpose ng enlightenment para malaman. So God's intention, it is always God's intention that we will know. Okay, it is God's intention that you should know. Amen. And uh, tingnan mo, i-ano po natin yan mamaya, no? And sabi niya, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, the purpose of that, that ye may know what is the hope of His calling. God is providing hope. And what the riches of the glory of His inheritance, God is also providing inheritance to those who are saved. And He wanted you to know the riches and the glory of that inheritance that is going to give to the to those who are who are uh, one with Him or or lahat ng naligtas niya. And not only that, to know also, verse 19, what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us word who believe according to the working of His mighty power. So He wants us also to know the exceeding greatness of His power. Amen. So He wants us to know the exceeding greatness of His power to us word. He wants us to know that that working, that mighty power, mighty working of His power to us, that exceeding greatness of His power, which He wrought in Christ. Kailan po nangyayari po yun? Kailan po niya trinabaho at i-display, ipinakita ang napakadakilang kapangyarihan po na yun, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead. And bago po namatay si Kristo, ay bago po siya nabuhay, siya po ay namatay, inilibing, at pangatlong araw na buhay muli, at sa pamamagitan ng kanyang kamatayan, pagkalibing at pagkabuhay muli, pinakita ng Diyos, ipinahayag ng Diyos sa lahat ng sanlibutan ang exceeding greatness of His power to us. Okay? To all men or to us especially who believe if you are a believer now. So it is His desire that you will know this. That's why that's the reason of being saved para magkaroon ka ng eyes of understanding. Magkaroon ka ng spiritual eyes na makita natin, maintindihan natin, malaman natin na mahal ka ng Diyos at ginawa ng Diyos ang lahat upang maabot niya ang tao, mailigtas niya ang tao, at even to the point na na-exercise ng Diyos ang lahat ng kanyang kapangyarihan. Babalikan ko po yan. It is first God's intention that you will know. It has always been His desire and intention that you will know. Amen. God has things, mga kabatid, uh, there are things that we don't know about God, but God has openly, okay, Um, tell us in His Word that He wants you to know that He desire that you might be saved. He wants you to know that, Amen, that He saved you and that He desire that you will know that He saved you. Amen. And He wants you to be saved. Look at, look at, look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 2. 1 Timothy chapter number 2. Let me be reading some verses here po mga kapatid. And The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter number 2, okay, the Bible says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. So it has been the desire of God that all men to be saved. Why He desires all men to be saved. And not only that, who will have all men to be saved. And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So not only it is his desire that all men be saved. He wants also all men to come to the knowledge of the truth. He wants you to know the truth. And he is the truth. The word of God is truth. The Lord Jesus Christ is truth. He wants you to come to the knowledge. And thank God sa mga provision na ganito. That we might come to the knowledge of the truth. And what else? Why? Why he wants all? Do that. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. When we talk about salvation, it's about, mga kapatid, of being justified before God. 
When we talk about salvation, it's about, mga kapatid, of being acceptable before God. And there is only one means. There is only one mediator. There is only one person that could bring you to God. It is not a church. It is not any minister. It is not any religion. But the Bible says, for there is one God and one mediator. That God is also the mediator between God and man. At the same time, He's not just God, but He's also a man. The man, Christ Jesus. Why God wanted everyone to, to be saved? You know why God wanted everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth, especially on what He has done for you? Because verse 6, who gave Himself a ransom for all? He gave himself a ransom for all. That's why he wanted you to know. Because he gave himself for you. When you talk about a ransom, it is a payment. It is a price of redemption. You, 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 it is, it is a, a, ano po, a, an amount po, mga kapatid, to pay for all the debts. So that he could redeem you or he could buy you back. And sabi niya, Jesus Christ gave himself. Amen. A ransom for all. And he wanted everyone to know. Amen. That he did that for everybody. Amen. That's why he desired that. Amen. That uh, that we will not or anybody would perish. For God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come. To repentance that all might be saved. So that's the desire of God. He wants you to know that um, he, he desire and he wants you to know. Amen. Na gusto niyang maligtas ka dahil namatay na siya. Nagbigay na siya ng kanyang buhay para sa iyo. And you know, going back doon sa sinasabi natin kanina, um, the greatest Okay, thing or the greatest uh, or the time yung mga oras kung saan pinakita ng Diyos ang kanyang kapangyarihan na punong-puno ay doon nung siya ay namatay sa cross ng Kalbaryo. Mga kapatid, nung create ang mundo, nung create niya ang mundo, Sinabi lang ng Diyos, let there be light. Let, be, let, there, let the dry ground appear. Amen. Let the waters be divided above the waters below, the firmament and all of that. Let there be fowls of the earth. Let be, there be fishes in the sea. And everything is done. He spoke it and it's done. Hindi man lang pinagpawisan ng Panginoon. In a snap of a finger, it is done. That's how powerful our God is. But you know, what is the greatest work that God has done where the exceeding greatness of His power was exercised or was displayed? It was when He saved you. It was when the time when He came to this world and saved you. When He created you, when He created man, He just formed. He just took the nothing, the dust, out from the ground. He just formed man out from the dust of the earth. And He breathed into His nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. That's how simple when He created you and me. But the greatest work he ever done as God, as the all-powerful God, is when he redeemed you. Is that when he saved your soul. Is that when he provided, amen, you salvation so that you don't have to go to hell. And yun ang gusto ko maintindihan po natin. Na, Nung niligtas ka ng Diyos, hindi niya sinabi, save ka na. Hindi niya sinabi, thou shalt be saved and you're done, you're saved. Hindi niya sinabi, your sins are forgiven thee. 
hindi niya sinabi na, okay, kalimutan ko na yung kasalanan, ligtas ka na. But when He saved you, He did not spoke it. But when He saved you, He has to come down here on this earth to be born of a woman, to manifest in the flesh. A God who is immortal has to die and has to bear your sins and has to satisfy the holy demand of God. And He did it all. Hindi man lang, hindi lang pawis ang meron sa kaya. Dugo, pawis, agony, sufferings. Because that salvation is only God can do. There is nothing in this universe and in this world could purchase salvation that could save you to the uttermost. Could you save anybody? Amen. Past, present, future and could save anybody and be justified forever. Only God can. No angels can. No other creatures can. Only Jesus Christ can. Only the most powerful. Amen. The most mighty. Amen. The most lofty and the sinless Savior can. Kasi kung pwede pang angels, gumanon, ginaw, ginawa na. But it has to be Him. And He did not just say it, and it was done. But He has to die. He has to bleed. Amen. He has to suffer. He has to bear our sins. And why so? Why so? Because God could not just magically appear disappear our sin because that would violate himself. And the greatest thing that God has ever done is when he died for you and me. Kasi sa creation lang, hindi naman siya pinagpawisan. Hindi man lang, laway lang puhunan, kumbaga sa atin pang mga kwento, usapan. Pero when the time He needs to save you from your sins, hindi niya pwedeng sabihin lang. Pero kailangan, hindi lang trabahoin lang. Pero He has to work to death. He has to conquer death and raise again. Amen. Out from that horrible pit. Amen. So, do you, you, you see that? So, what I'm saying is this. Itong topic natin, new series natin, it's not a small thing. Our salvation is not a small thing to God. It is a great thing. It is a very, very important thing. It is too great for God. It is too precious. Kaya sabi niya, we were not redeemed by corruptible things like silver or gold, okay? But with the precious blood of Christ who is without spot, amen, and blemish. It has to be His blood. It has to be His life. It has to be His righteousness. Or else there will be no salvation. So our salvation is not a small thing to God. It is everything to God. And it is even the whole basis of God that there is nothing that we, He could withheld to the same person because He has already proven you by giving you the greatest thing that He could ever give you and that is His Son. That's why when, he's, when the Bible said He spared not His own Son but deliver Him up For us all. God deliver Him up for us all. Hindi niya pinagkait ang kanyang anak sa atin. He spared not. Hindi niya dahil po ang kanyang anak po ay ang kasalanan natin ay nasa kanya. He spared not His own son. But He deliver Him up for us all. That's why. That is now the foundation and the basis of God's promise to you and claim to you that there is nothing that is too big to give you because He has already proven you by giving you the greatest thing, the greatest gift that He could ever provide. And that is His life. That is His blood. That is His all. 
And that's why it says, How shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Wala. Mayro bang mga bagay ni God would withhold? God could not give to the believer? There is none. Hindi nga niya pinagkait ang kanyang anak. Ang iba pang mga bagay. So, our salvation is no small thing to God. It is too precious to God. That's why the Bible says, for the redemption of our soul is precious. It is so precious. And when you miss salvation, it is also your greatest loss. When, when you miss to be saved, it is also your greatest loss. When God provided you His salvation, He provided you His all. And when you miss that, and when you reject salvation, you also experience your greatest loss. That's why the Bible says, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? Anong mapapala ng isang tao na naangkin mo ang buong sanlibutan at mapahamak ang iyong kaluluwa sa impyerno? Anong mapapala mo? Nothing! Lugi! Bakit? Because the things of all the universe accumulate them and you may have it, but lugi ka pa rin if you lose your own soul. That's why I'm saying is if you miss what Christ has done for you, you miss, amen, uh, you miss the gift of God, which is God's all given to you, provided for you when His Son, and you also experience the greatest loss. Amen. Di bali nang wala ang sanlibutan sa'yo. Di bali nang wala ang sanlibutan sa'yo or wala kang mga bagay-bagay, hindi ka abundant sa mundong ito, wala kang mga treasure kaya kayamanan sa mundong ito. But if you have the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are saved, if you have that salvation that He has done for you po mga kapatid, you also gain. Amen. You also receive the greatest gain. Amen. And now, this is something in, a, in this series, na pinag-usapan in series of Bible study, to know that salvation, why it has to be that salvation is God's all. And there are three things that every Christian should know. And I said this many, many times, and but you have to do, understand this, that every believer should know, okay, every believer should know he is saved. My question this morning is, are you saved? Do you know when you are going to leave that body because one day you are going to leave this body and this body will go back to the ground as it was. And your soul will stand before God. But the question is, do you know where will you spend your eternity? Do you know whether your sins are forgiven or not? Are you guaranteed that when you die today, you will have a home and a place in heaven? Are you guaranteed that when you die today, you are acceptable before a holy God? Amen. Every believer, if you are saved, amen, or if you are, if you are listening right now, you should know if you are saved or not. Amen. Now, if you are a believer, you should know you are saved. Because salvation is not I hope so thing. Salvation is not something that perhaps or per adventure. Many times we have conversation 
when we witness sana uh, pa, ang tanong ko sa kanila uh, paano mo uh, masasabi mo ba sa sarili mo sabi niya sabi ko masasabi mo ba sa sarili mo na ikaw ay ligtas at ang kadalasang sagot ay abay ang Diyos lang nakakaalam niyan ang kadalasang sagot ay sana Pero sabi ko, what do you think? Sabi niya, parang hindi. So tapos tatanungin ko, ganon? Ano, ano sa palagay mo makapagligtas sa'yo? Tapos meron silang mga sagot. So bago po yan, I want you to know that salvation is guaranteed. That salvation can be known now. Salvation can be obtained with certainty. It is not, I hope so, it's not just to wait until I die. But you can know now. It is a present possession. And that's the reason why He gave us the book. He gave us the Bible. And all of these things, amen, in the Bible are knowable. These are knowable truth. You can know it. Because the Bible tells it about it po mga kabadid. And the Bible says, these things have I written unto you that you believe in the name of the Son of God that ye may know. It's a know-so thing. That ye may know that ye have eternal life. Amen. The Bible says, for the gospel came unto, unto you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. So you could have assurance, much assurance. You could be guaranteed. Amen. It's not, it, it, it's not a hoping thing. It's a no-so thing. Not I hope so. No-so thing. Amen. And that's our prayer that you will know that you can be saved now. Amen. And if you are a believer, you should know you are saved. Amen. And the next thing is, not only every believer should know he is saved, if every believer should know how he got saved. How he got saved. Kasi, pagtanungin ko, mga tao, now, ano sa tingin mo ang makapapagligtas sa'yo? And they will say, um, magpakabait ka, kailangan mo, of course, kailangan mo magsimba, tapos sa tanong ko, ano pa? Ah, kailangan mong hindi magkasala. Ano pa? Kailangan mong sumunod sa Panginoon. Tanongin ko, ano pa? Ano sa tingin mo kapaglig? Ah, kailangan mong magdasal palagi. Ano pa? Kailangan mong mag, magpabautismo. Ano pa? Kailangan mong magpamiyembro sa isang relihiyon, simbahan. Kaila oh, ano pa? Kailangan mo. So the list goes on. Pag sinabi pong ano pa, dadagdagan nila, ano pa? Sa tingin mo, Hanggang maubusan na lang sila ng sagot. But ang, ang point is, why they still add to what they said? Because they know deep inside their hearts that they are not enough. They are not sufficient. That's why they still think. They still think and think and think more of any possibility on how to be saved. So they have other concept on how to be saved. On all of those testimony, sabi ng Diyos, hindi yun makapagligtas. Wala doon ang makapagligtas. So those answers are ignorance. Based on ignorance or no knowledge at all on what God says about how to be saved. And if you are a believer, if you, if you say you're saved, you should know how you got saved. You should know how you got saved, po mga kapatid. Do you know? Is what you say you think that save you, is it in the Bible? Is it what God says? Kasi ang salvation, personal po ito. Pero, you will, bakit ka naghahanap ng kaligtasan? Bakit gusto mong maligtas? Because alam mong mananagot ka sa Diyos. Ngayon, have you asked God okay, of what it means to be saved? Have you asked God on how 
you should be saved. If you do, you will go to the Bible and look at it because that's the answer of God. Amen. So this series would tell you that you are saved if you have trusted Christ. And this series also would tell us on how we got saved. On what are the things that God has done. And this series also will tell you by the grace of God on how to lead others to Christ. If you got saved, you have your responsibility. And that responsibility is also how to allow others to be saved also by preaching and by telling them what he did. So this is very important to miss. And that's why if you are listening right now, we would not do this in one day. But you could follow through to this course and let's study the Bible concerning the things on salvation. Mga kapatid, I have, we have a lot of things to say about these things. But just for the sake ng atin pong usapan po at introduction po mga kapatid is I'd like you to know that every human being recognizes that there you there is a threefold need there is a threefold need okay sinabi natin threefold need ano yung threefold need po mga kabatid first is in regard to yesterday in regard to yesterday Number two is in regard to today. Or number three, in regard tomorrow. Ito po palagi and let me qualify these things. Ano yung threefold need po natin? Kaya ang tao nag-iisip because he has past to deal with and he has present to face and he has tomorrow to prepare. And usually, whether sa salvation man o sa mga ibang bagay, we are always thinking about that. Our lives revolves around what happened, what should happen, what will happen tomorrow. So in regard to yesterday po mga kapatid, in regards to in regard to in regard to tomorrow and today to today is we'll, we'll deal on that later on. So what in regard to yesterday po mga kapatid? Why? Bakit meron kang concern about yesterday? Now, let's go to salvation. Ang concept natin ngayon sa salvation. Because yesterday was a day of sin. And you know, when someone asks you about, are you saved? The first thing that would come out in your mind is what you did yesterday. What you did in the past. What you did just earlier. The first thing that you it would come out in your mind when you are asked about your salvation is your problem greatest problem is the sin that we did. It was yesterday because yesterday was the day of sin. And many times in our encounter we will ask are you saved? Ay siguro hindi kasi nagkasala ko kanina, kahapon at maraming beses in the past. So that would become a greatest threat or hindrance, mga kapatid, sa kanilang assurance of being saved. So now question is, 
Yesterday was the day of sin. Now, ang tanong is, what are we to do with the past years? Kaya, we cannot leave them over again? Hindi naman natin pwedeng balikan ang kahapon or maandu ang kahapon. Ang nangyari na ay nangyari na. That's why it's really a problem. It's really a concern. Na may mga bagay na hindi na natin may balik. It's really a legitimate concern. And what are we to do with the past? What are we to do with yesterday? What are we to do with the past years and past days and months and weeks? We cannot live them over again. That's why it's a, a concern. Or nor balance them by works. Okay, of superrogation. Ano bang ibig kong sabihin ng, okay, Supero regation. What do I mean by that, po mga kabadet? Uh, Superero, okay? Regation. Yeah. What do I mean by that? Ibig lang sabihin po mga kabadet na may pagkautang ka sa kahapon. And when you when you when you say in that term I'm I'm using this loosely para makita kasi this is the exact term that I would like you to understand is this is the payment beyond what is needed this is the payment beyond what is asked this is a performance of more than that is asked for or the action of doing more than duties require ibig sabihin you could not do that once it happened already in the past. You could no longer undo that even if you try to pay it more than what was required in the past, more than what was required or asked to do for you. But if it's happened, if it's due, there's nothing you can do. Kaya, our past really is a problem. May mga past sins po tayo. And I'm telling you, it, there are many. There are so many. Amen. And hindi na natin pwedeng mabalikan yun o hindi na natin pwedeng mabayaran yun. Kumbaga, naglaps na. So that's really a problem. That's really a concern. Now what about today? That was yesterday. And if there's nothing you can do about yesterday, what about today? Now, if I have managed, ito naman ang concern natin, pagtanungin about salvation, you are thinking of yesterday. Now ngayon, ito naman ang concern ko. Given that I have managed given that I have been able to, to make provision for the past, given that I have managed to provide for the sin of yesterday, my, your next concern naman is, what am I to do for today? Kung na, nagampanan ko or na-providean yung sa past, ang tanong mo ngayon, what about today? Paano mag, kung magkasala ako ulit? Paano pag maulit? So magda-doubt ka naman ngayon. Tatanungin, oo nga no. For today, if there is no change in my nature, kung ngayon, if there is no change in my nature, if there is no real transformation that happened to me, if I, I'm still the same person as yesterday, as I am today, I will sin. And I will still sin as yesterday. We are now confronted with a real concern. That's why these three, threefold need is, I have to answer, what about yesterday? 
given. Of course, you know, wala ka na magagawa sa yesterday. Pero, pinaglagay na lang natin na nagampanan mo yung yesterday. Paano yung today? Or pang araw-araw mong pamumuhay? Could you guarantee that kaya mong i-maintain ang iyong salvation? Could you guarantee na hindi ka na magkakasala? Could you guarantee na talagang sigurado ka sa ano mo? Na hindi ka matemp, hindi ka mahulog sa kasalanan? Kaya ang concern mo, kung hindi mo nga nagawa ng kahapon, and if you are the same person as yesterday, like today, you will sin, amen, as yesterday. That is a legitimate problem, a concern. Now, in regards to tomorrow, what am I to do with tomorrow? Suppose that I have been able to make provision. Supposing, ah. Supposing that I am able to make provision for the past and for the present, which we know we can't. But supposing lang, just for the sake. Amen. For the past and the present, for yesterday and today. Now, the next question is, what am I to do for tomorrow? What about tomorrow? What if tomorrow I will sin? What if tomorrow I will die? I will sin and die. For tomorrow will come, amen, with the same temptation. For tomorrow will come with the same struggle. For tomorrow will come with the same sin and the same old suggestion, the same evil, the same helplessness, the same problem of sin as in the past, as in the present, and still the same, amen, old enemy for tomorrow. That's another legitimate concern. From this, mga kapatid, that's really a need. So when we talk about salvation, real salvation that you have to be, amen, free and justified, okay, or settled as your sin of the past or yesterday salvation must settled as your sin for today and salvation must settled as your sin for tomorrow and that is real salvation if only yesterday have been dealt with you're not actually saved at all if only today has been dealt with and yesterday has not been dealt with you are not even saved at all yet. And if your past is dealt with and your today is dealt with and tomorrow is no guarantee, that is not even yet salvation. But if you are listening today, what about your yesterday? Can you say you failed? Amen. Now, what about today? Can you guarantee that you will never fail again? What about tomorrow? Can you assure yourself na hindi na mauulit bukas? If you haven't dealt with your past, if you haven't dealt with the present, if you could not do anything about the present, I'm telling you, you will have the same concern and problem tomorrow. From this, mga kabaden, from this, okay, from these things, okay, like you to understand. From these things, we need what? We need pardon. We need pardon for the past. And from this, we need purity. Okay? We need, mga kapatid, purity for the present. And we need power 
for the future. If not, hindi ka masisave. Kasi, wala ka na magagawa sa past eh. Hindi mo na pwedeng mabalikan yun eh. What you need is pardon, forgiveness. Maabsuelto ka. How? Para ma-maintain mo ang today mo. You need purity. But how could you maintain if you are not pure? Ibig sabihin, you still sin as yesterday. And you need power for the future. If you were powerless in the past, in the present, much more you need that in the future. Now, question is, where are we to get them? <laughs> where are we to get them? You need a salvation from sin and from hell and from condemnation that would secure your past, that would secure your present, and that would secure your future. And where can I find that kind of salvation that provided for my past, for my present, and for my future? If not all of them had been dealt with and guaranteed, you will always have doubts and questions whether with you are saved or not. But not until your past, present, future salvation is satisfied and provided. That is the only time then you could have assurance of salvation. That's the only time that you could have guarantee of salvation and confidence of salvation. Not until those three demands of yesterday, Today and tomorrow will be satisfied. Amen. You'll never experience the joy of being saved. Amen. The blessing of being saved. But you will always be in doubt and in question and wondering, what am I to do? And the next question, the next good question is, where are we to get them? Amen. Where are we to get them? If us, we have seen, mga kapatid, and I would like you to know, the Bible says, for by one man, okay, as by one man, let me read, ito yun ha, Galish, uh, Romans chapter number 5. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 5, verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin, entered into the world. So dahil sa isang tao, sin entered into the world. And death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Po mga kapatid. In this verse, we see that sin is the world's poison. Sin is the world's poison. When Adam sinned, his sin become the world's poison. It contaminated every human being that is born in this world. It is now a universal problem. Because of sin and death came, and because all have sinned, then all will die. And that's why we have been talking about these things. We needed salvation that would secure my yesterday, my present, and my future. And But the problem is, is there's still sin, mga kapatid. Ang question is, where are we to get them? And But there is the hindrance of sin that it become the blood poison. And every human being that is born in this world has inherited that disease and inherited that sin-sick I mean, nature. Then there is a remedy. As, as there is a remedy somewhere for every disease, Sabi nila, wala pang gamot ang cancer. One day, magkagamot din yan. Dati, wala namang gamot ang tuberculosis. Nagkagamot din. 
may mga bagay na ngayon ang COVID, sabi nila wala pang gamot, vaccine lang pala ang kailangan, pwede. Magkagamot din yan later on. Dati yung mga typhoid fever, or they call it the Spanish flu, madaming namamatay, millions kasi wala pang gamot, but later on, nagkakaroon na. Okay, as there is a remedy somewhere for every disease, my point is, there must be a remedy also for the disease of sin. You know, can I tell you something? Itong sin na ito, it caused all men to die. They said that cancer, they said that heart attack, that or whatever form of diseases have killed millions of people all over the world. Can I tell you something? But sin kills everybody. It kills everyone. Mga kapatid. It can kill anybody. At yun po yung universal problem. Yun ang real na pandemic. Because it's not a problem of one place. It's a problem in whole earth. In all areas in this world. But there must be a remedy for the disease of sin. And this remedy is found in the gospel. Praise God. In Romans 1.16, Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. So there is the salvation that we need that would answer our past, our present, our future. There is the remedy of sin that we need. And it's in the gospel of Christ. And the gospel of Christ is the power of God. If I needed power, it is the power of God unto salvation. Everyone that believe it. What is the gospel? We all know that it is how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that on the third day he rose again according to the scripture. What is the gospel of our salvation? The Bible says, in whom you trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, and ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So there is the gospel of our salvation. That's the goodness of our salvation. And it is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ as the antidote for our sin problem, for our disease of sin, for our problem in the past, in the present, and in the future, God already provided it in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and what He did. And the way to take that antidote, that, ano po, that medicine, that remedy for the disease of sin is by believing. When you trust, when you believe, po mga kapatid, that, 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 that remedy for our salvation would take effect. The power of God unto salvation would take effect, po mga kapatid. And it, is, it was Jesus Christ provided for that. And 1 Timothy 1, verse number 15, where it tells us, the Bible says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's why Jesus came to save sinners. That's why He came to bring that antidote, to bring, to bring that, ano po mga kapatid, that medicine for the sin-sick world. Amen. And it was purchased, amen, with his own blood. 
And with this, we will have to answer all of this. Now, going going back to another, ano po mga kapatid, just, just like to, to go further dito po. Now, think, think with me. The word salvation, okay, when we talk about salvation, the word salvation, okay, is used in the Bible to indicate a work of God in behalf of men. I would like you, this would indicate the work of God in behalf of men. Sa ating mga listeners today, I don't want you to miss that because most of us have different concept. Okay? Have different concept. Some of us have different concept of how to be saved and what is salvation. But I would like you to know what the Bible says about salvation, especially in our present dispensation sa panahon po natin, that the word salvation, the term salvation, okay, it is used limited to his work for the individual. Its use is limited, okay, to the work of God for every single individual. Amen. And it is guaranteed to them upon one definite condition. This salvation and work of God in behalf of men is guaranteed on one definite condition. And that condition is faith or believing or belief. Amen. Too much emphasis po mga kapatid cannot be placed on the work of individual for God. Marami po ang mga tao ngayon na ang emphasis nila para sila ay maligtas is their work for God. Amen. But the Bible says now, sa panahon po natin, According to the Bible, okay, salvation is the result of the work of God for the individual. It is the work of God for the individual rather than the work of the individual for God. It is not the work of the individual for God or it is not even the work of an individual for himself. Okay, I'd like you to understand that this is the work of God. Okay, for, okay, in behalf or for men, in behalf of men. Not, okay, not the work for God. Not only that, not even, not the work for himself. Okay, not the work for the individual, for himself, or for you. Not even for God. But it is entirely and wholly and solely the work of God for you. Not the other way around. That's why I could not place much emphasis. Mga kapatid. Eventually, Amen. If you, kung ikaw ay maligtas, if you will be saved by the work of God for you, okay, may after that divine work is accomplished, will do good works for God. Because it was said that salvation is said to be unto good works. But it is after. You are not doing good works to be saved. But salvation is unto good works. The Bible says, For we are His workmanship. 
created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You have to be saved first, then you could perform good works. We're not saying that w working for God is ba a bad thing. Amen. We're not saying service for God is a bad thing. But wh what we're saying is it cannot save you. That is not the plan of God to save you. But salvation is in this time period, in our dispensation, is wholly the work of God for you. Not your, work, not your work for God and not your work for yourself. Amen. And dapat maintindihan natin. But as believers, kung ikaw ay ligtas na, you are to be careful to maintain good works. We're told in the Bible to maintain good works, not to maintain your salvation, but to maintain your good works because you are saved. Those who believe, if you're already saved, because you have that testimony that you maintain good works. And good works are evidently made possible by salvation. You could not produce good works if you are not saved. You could not produce good works that is acceptable to God to save you. Acceptable or for payment for your salvation. Remember, salvation is too costly. That there is no other means but God to die for you. Do not lower down the price of your salvation by attempting to pay it. Our salvation is priceless. Amen. It is too costly. Too high to attain. That only Jesus Christ can. Amen. So, it, these works that you are trying to emphasize for God to be saved can only be made possible by salvation. You have to be saved. Then it can be possible. But this good work which follows salvation, these good works that follow salvation, they do not add anything to all sufficient and perfect saving work of Christ. If you work after you got saved, you are not adding to what Christ had done. Because what Christ had done is settled and all sufficient and perfect work of God for you. So that is to say, as used in the New Testament, remember, please, salvation is not what you did. Amen. But it's what he did for you. Don't miss that. So as, as used in the New Testament, dito sa Bible, the word salvation may indicate all or part of divine undertaking. Whether all and part. Ano bang ibig mo sabihin? It indicates that this is a God's undertaking. This is God's work. It could mean all of it and part of, of this divine or part of that divine undertaking. When the reference is to all of the work of God, okay, the whole transformation is in view from the, the state wherein one is lost, you are lost and condemned to final appearance. Amen to the final appearance of that one in the image of Christ in glory. And this larger use of the word, therefore, combines it in many separate works of God for the individuals. When you look at about that, when you talk about salvation, it is a combined virtues of what Christ had done. And all of that collectively as atonement, grace, propitiation, forgiveness of sins, which we're going to discuss as we go on in this topic Justification, imputation, regeneration, adoption, sanctification, redemption, and glorification. Amen. And when we talk about salvation, it's the combined virtues that was accomplished by the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So, let's look at Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 11 and verse number 12. In this passage po, mga kapatid, okay, 
it described the state okay from which and the state the state into which the individual is saved kung saan tayo galing at kung saan tayo naligtas it describe our condition in past ano sabi sa Ephesians 2:11 and 12 this is a two contrasting verse that dapat natin ma-appreciate nung una in times past before we got saved before a man is saved the bible says wherefore remember that ye being in times past gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands that at the time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world you have no hope and without God in the world if you are unsaved right now if you are not saved if you have not, not uh, no assurance of salvation if you have no guarantee you're still asking where am i going to go if i die if you have not trusted Christ if you have not if you have not believed that what he did for you his death burial and resurrection is what actually saves you if you have not trusted that but instead you trust yourself po mga kapatid let me tell you something po mga kapatid amen ye are the bible says at this moment amen ye are without hope ye are without god in the world you are only strangers ye are without christ ye are still aliens you are still not god doesn't know you yet as his son or as his children but we are still his enemies we are still not part of his family and that's a very sad condition that is a very sad state we have no hope we will die without hope we will die without god we will die without a savior that's the condition but nung ikaw ay maligtas kung ikaw ay maligtas pakinggan po natin Ano sabi ng 1st John chapter number 3 verse number 2 Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God Kung ikaw hindi saved today you are no child of God you have no hope of heaven you have no hope of eternal life and that's a very sad state but if you got saved if you are saved and if you just trust on what Christ had done for you that salvation he provided if you get that and trust it by faith with one definite condition and that is faith not work but faith trusting his work for you not trusting your work for god or not trusting your work for yourself but trusting the work of god that that real resurrection for you the good news is you will now become you will be called the sons of god you're no longer strangers you're no longer foreigners or you no longer have without christ without god having no hope but god will become your father but god become your god you're no longer his enemy Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not it says beloved now are we the sons of god now are we the sons of god you could know now and it doth not yet appear what we shall be but we know when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is you see your yesterday is secured your today is secured and your tomorrow is secured Amen. It does not know. Amen. That not yet appear what we shall be, but we know. You have now that assurance. We know not only now, but we know that in the future. We know that in tomorrow. But we know that when He shall appear, that's future. We shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. There could be no greater contrast of possible states for men 
One is condemned. The other one is strangers and foreigners without hope, without God, without Christ. But look at that contrast on the other hand. Behold what manner of God the Father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. And we know it. Amen. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. Hindi pa man nakita ngayon what we shall be. But we know. See that? It's a no-so thing. When He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as is. That's a guarantee of the future, of tomorrow. This transformation from being alien, stranger without God, to become the beloved sons of God. This transformation, rather than representing the greatest thing impotent men can do for God, I have to picture men as impotent. It is these verses is not representing the greatest thing an impotent man can do for God, but rather this represents the greatest thing the infinite God, the all powerful God can do. For men. Dapat maintindihan natin. This is representing what God can do to you by His power, by His might, and by His salvation. That's what He can do for men. He could transform you from being aliens, from being held bound, from being condemned to become His beloved sons, assured of the past and of the present and of the future. Po mga kapatid. For there is nothing to be conceived of beyond the estate to which this salvation brings one. And you'll become one day like Christ. And will be one day to be conformed to the image of His Son. That's the future salvation. Mga kapatid, much of God's whole undertaking in salvation. This whole undertaking of salvation, listen very carefully, is accomplished in the saved. It is accomplished in the believer. It is accomplished on those who trust Christ at the moment he exercised the saving faith. The moment you put your trust, you believe, you cling. Amen. You hold on to what Christ had done and trusted him. This undertaking happens to you in an instant. It is accomplished to us in an instant. When we put our faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And some portion of this work are informed by process of transformation. Yun, secured na yun. Yung past, dealt na yun. Pero ang, future, ang, ang present natin is progressive. Pero hindi ka ang nagmi-maintain. It is God slowly working it with you. Providing you the purity that you need for the present. And transforming you by and by. Amen. Until. Amen. It would be fully accomplished. And again, there is a phase of divine undertaking. Okay. Which revealed as consummating the whole work of God at the moment of its completion. And this last aspect of salvation is holy future. One, it is accomplished. It is, ano po mga kapatid? It is ongoing. And this is a guarantee. And tomorrow. So salvation then, in this present dispensation, may be considered po mga kapatid in three tenses in the scripture. That's why ang kasag ang threefold need natin yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And praise God, ang salvation din na binigay ng Panginoon sa atin is in three tenses to answer our problem of yesterday, our problem of today, and our problem of tomorrow. The need, the pardon that we need, the purity that we need, and the power that we need po mga kabatid, the salvation na binigay ng Diyos sa atin is to answer those three tenses. The past salvation that we need or the part of the work which is already or wholly accomplished in 
At yung salvation na yun is already accomplished, wholly accomplished for the one who has believed. That's the past salvation. And the present salvation po mga kapatid, or that which is now being accomplished, unti-unti ngayon, habang nakikinig ka, habang tinutuluan ka pa ng Panginoon, now being accomplished in and for the one who has believed. And these are all for the believers. And the future, mga kapatid, or that which will be accomplished to complete the work of God in and for the one has believed. Amen. This is all for the believer. So the, if you are saved, if you are a believer right now, your past is secured. Amen. Your present is, is being accomplished. And your future will be accomplished to complete the work of God. And guess what? You have not accomplished the slightest thing of any of those things. It is the work and holy the work of God for you. It was Christ who accomplished. And it is Christ is now being accomplished in or accomplishing these things in you. And it will be Christ who will also accomplish. That's why the Bible says, He that begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So salvation then, therefore, is a threefold process. Salvation then is a threefold process. Okay? First off, mga kapatid, it begins with justification. And justification would answer the issue of yesterday. Okay, we'll be dealing, talking about this in the studies of salvation one by one. Don't worry. And mga kapatid, it begins with a it justification. Then it would proceed to what you need today is sanctification. Which next week we're going to discuss nito. What you need tomorrow po mga kapatid is glorification. And all of that is secured and all of that provided when Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. It provided Calvary covers it all. It is all covered, fully covered, mga kapatid. So we can say, so we can say this, having this, mga kapatid, salvation is threefold process. Justification that deals the past, provided the pardon for the past, Sanctification deals for the present, provided purity for the present. Glorification okay, is a provision for tomorrow that gives us the power for the future. Po, mga kapatid. So ano ang point ko po mga kapatid is this. Let's look at, this would be our last verse. Titus chapter number 2. In this last verse, mga kapatid, makikita po natin. Lahat ng sinasabi po natin. Look at Titus chapter number 2. Let me read. Titus 2, verse number 11 to 13. Let me read. The Bible says in verse number 11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. That is the past. Amen. Now, that is, bago ka pa pinanganak, namatay na si Jesus Christ para sa iyo. Kaya, wala, hindi mo man mabalikan ang past. Yung grace na yon that bring its salvation had already appeared. Kaya wala ka nang babalikan dahil bago ka pa pinanganak, settled na ang past na issue mo. Kasi may provision na para sa past sins mo si Jesus Christ yun. Yun yung biyaya na yun. Glory to God. Amen. And what else po mga kapatid? In verse number 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness, worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. In the past, He brought salvation. He brought pardon for you. In the present, He is now teaching you for purity, to deny ungodliness, worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. It is now dealing with our sanctification. First was justification. The other one was was sanctification, the future. What is the future? Looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our, our great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. That is glorification, that one day Jesus Christ will come for all whom He saved and get them out of this world and bring them to glory and give them the body can no longer sin. A body 
could would be removed from the presence of sin. So that is to say po mga kabatid, amen, that is to say that we are saved, okay, we are saved, sa, pag, sa yesterday, we are saved because of justification, we are saved from the penalty of sin. We are saved from the penalty of sin. Yung sin issue natin, ang, ang salvation nitong justification for the pre present, we are saved from the power of sin. And itong glorification, will be, we will be saved from the presence of of sin. And we will deal on that, all of that, sa future. What I'm saying is, I'm done for this moment, and I will leave you with that. But what I'm saying is, let me end with this. Brethren, if you're, if you're listening, I want you to appreciate this. That when Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, buried and rose again the third day, and he's now at the right hand of the Father. When he accomplished that work, he already made a provision for the past, for the present, and for the future. That's all settled. The work is done. And it's all finished. And you need to appreciate that the salvation that you receive right now, that you have right now, is forever. There is no more issues about the past, the present. That's all cleared. If you sin in the past, that's cleared. If you sin now, that has been cleared. And if you will still sin tomorrow, that's all cleared. That's the benefit of being saved. Now to those who have not trusted Christ, who have not, I'm telling you, there is only one person and that is God who was manifest in the flesh who became man so that he could bleed and so that he could die and save you for your sin. And the, he is the only one that brought this salvation that would answer to your past or your yesterday question or concern of yesterday and today and forever and tomorrow. And I would, if you would just trust him, if you just put your faith on that death, the burial, and resurrection of Christ, mga kapatid, is that this salvation of your past, present, future will be guaranteed. Will be settled. Now, once na masave ka, wala ka nang imi-maintain. Once na magtiwala ka, wala ka nang imi-maintain. Total package po yan. Pak! Settled. And it will be settled to you instantly. Upon faith, the moment you believe, instantly, your past is, amen, pardon, amen. Your present, amen, is, ano po, is guaranteed and your future is secured. And all of that because it's all the work of God for you, not your work for God or not your work for yourself. But it is wholly the work of Christ accomplished to you if you just only trust him. Remember the verse that I have told you, okay? The gospel of Christ that contains the death, burial, and resurrection, it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. To everyone that believe it. That when you trust in whom you trusted, okay? After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the gospel of your salvation that Jesus Christ did it all for you, in whom also after that he believed, then instantly you will you'll be sealed. Sealed. When you talk about sealing, you're sealed. You're secured, safe and secured. Amen. By that Holy Spirit of promise. Mga kapatid, you, have now, you are now saved from the penalty of sin. You are now saved from the power of sin. And you are now saved from the presence of sin. Justification, sanctification, then glorification. Glory, glory. And many, many things in terms of salvation that we're going to talk about. 
And we're still in this introduction part, introductory part, but many, many more messages that would help you and would cause you to appreciate what Jesus Christ had done for you. Brethren, appreciate the Lord's working and the Lord's salvation for your life. Amen. For those who are still not sure where to go, amen, don't miss Christ. As what I have told you, if you miss to trust him now for your salvation and what he did, you will miss the greatest thing in this life. And that is to be saved. Because there is nothing that you can do. There is nothing that you have. There is nothing that you can obtain that is enough to secure your past, present, future. Only what Christ has done for you has accomplished your need for the past, present, and future. Believe him now. Trust him now. And that is salvation in the Bible. And praise, praise God for that, Puma. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us, Dito. I hope I'll, we'll see you every Friday. And mga kapatid, napakadami pa natin. Napakadami pa natin. Pagandang pag-uusap. And just stay tuned. You may invite your loved ones. You may invite ano po mga kapatid. And we'll try. Because this is not just edification purposes. But it's also evangelistic po mga kapatid. So all facets kung saan para ma maano po natin, ma-invite at ma-save. Ma Magkaroon ng opportunity ang bawat isa, ma-save po mga kapatid. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you Panginoon for your goodness amen, for your love na pinapakita nyo. Salamat for securing, Lord, ang aming past, present, future. Thank you for the provision of past, present, future na need po namin, Panginoon. Because you are an omnipotent God, an omniscient God. You know, Lord, everything. And you accomplish it once only sa ginawa ni Kristo. Panginoon, sa mga hindi pa nakasigurado, nakatiyak sa kanilang kaligtasan, tulungan nyo sila, Lord, na mapagbulay-bulayan, maisip nila ang kanilang estado ng kanilang kaluluwa kung saan na sila and help them Lord to see assurance in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for them and thank you Lord for this morning and bless you Lord and bless the rest of the program for today and this we ask in Jesus name Amen and Amen thank you brethren good morning and God bless you God bless